Urban runoff from inland creeks and rivers are to blame for 80% of marine debris found in the Pacific Ocean. And this year's likely El Nino could make things worse. Here with how to prevent and reduce stormwater runoff are my guests, Rob Hetzel, director of San Diego River Park Foundation, and Bill Harris, manager of San Diego's Think Blue Pollution and Prevention Education Campaign. And Rob, remind us of what urban runoff actually is and its impact on local marine life. Sure, urban runoff is simply the water that runs off from a community, whether it's rain or you have your hose running, and with it, it carries pollution. All of that eventually makes it into our rivers, out into the bays and out in the ocean, and it carries those pollutions that harms marine animals. You know, uh, uh, plastics get stuck in their throat, um, you know, those sort of things, and the pollutions that it carries. Sure, we're looking at pictures from uh, the San Diego River Park Foundation. We just saw Mission Valley. We're also seeing uh, pictures of water running into the ocean. Uh, the San Diego River is actually listed um, federally, on a federal list, as an impaired body of water. What's it contaminated with and how polluted is it? it it's a great question. The, the, uh, it's on the 303D list, it's an EPA list, and it's different things. One of them is dissolved oxygen, which isn't pollution, it's, it's the quality of the system and how it works. There's also TDS and there's uh, fecal coliform. So those are more direct pollutions. And so... So fecal bacteria, and where's that coming from? Well, by and large, sewer spills. It comes from people living in the river, it comes from dogs, it comes from um, those sort of things. Um, and uh, it's it's quite a problem because obviously we know every time it rains we have to close the beaches and the bays, I mean the, the, yeah, the beaches, um, for three days until they test the water to make sure it's clean. And so nice. that's the problem. That's the problem. And Bill, storm drains are another source of uh, marine pollution. What are some of the major pollutants you find coming through the storm drains? Well, it's all part and parcel. The river is just one of the receiving water bodies that all of the drains in our urban area lead to. All storm water in San Diego goes to the ocean untreated. So it starts in our neighborhoods. It starts on our uh, front yard, and then it runs into the curb and gutter, into the drains, into the San Diego River, Choice Creek, Tijuana River Valley, and eventually out to the ocean. And we see the same sorts of things. It's the fecal coliform. It's the total dissolved solids that Rob talked about. But more than anything, it's bacteria. That's really the big pollutant at the moment. Well, uh, what's the city doing to stop these kind of pollutants from making its way to the ocean? There's a whole host of things that we do. Not only public education, but we're actually beginning to build a series of things that we call low-impact development. We use permeable pavement, for instance, Kellogg Park, La Jolla Shores. The water is able to f infiltrate into the ground. The pollutants stay there, and the water flows on. We've got a detention basin in Memorial Park. We also have a host of other things coming on board. We're going to be doing what we call green streets where we take streets themselves and get the water to flow from them into areas that will let that water go a lot slower, the pollutants percolate out, and then move on with a lot less pollutant loading. And kind of, the, you say the pollutants percolate out into the ground, but the water is able to move forward. Yeah, and, and, what, and it, what it does is it, sometimes it's sequestering, meaning it takes the, the, the pollutant itself and holds it there. Sometimes that pollutant, in fact, will uh, degrade with the materials that are around it. So it's a pretty good system of getting Putin out of the water. Well, as we know, the National Weather Service says there's a 90% chance of an El Nino this year, so lots of water. So, Rob, how do big rainstorms like that affect the river and uh, urban runoff? Well, let's talk about the good stuff. Um, so a big rain actually will scour the bottom of the river and pick up with it all of the stuff that's accumulated when there's been low flow. And that's a wonderful thing. It makes a healthier system. But also, it also carries more things. So whether it's a broken bridge or whether it's uh, some trash that hasn't been washed down into the system, all of a sudden it accumulates. And you'll see it flowing out into the ocean. It'll literally be a dark stream of water with it, anything you can think of. We've seen boats, we've seen cars, we've seen, I mean, it's an amazing, uh, car parts, I should say. Um, we've seen a lot of different things, but the things that you can't see is what the real problem is. It's the little pieces of plastic, it's the pesticides, it's the chemicals that you wouldn't normally see because they're too small. So that makes it all the way to the ocean. That's we saw some pictures of that from your foundation. The, it makes it to the ocean. What kind of impact that does, it, does that have on our local marine ecology. It's significant, you know, whether they're just eaten. I mean, some of the fish and those sort of birds in particular will see something and it looks like food, but it's not. It's plastic. And they'll eat it and ingest it and eventually die from starvation. You'll see pollution that gets into the, the fish system or whatever the animal is out there. And, and it literally will kill it. And so those are the problems. And then maybe a, a fish or person eats that food and so we get sick. And so th those are the sort of problems we see. So it follows the food chain. Well, there's a lot more about this on our website, kppbs.org. Rob Hutzel and Bill Harris, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.